Hi everyone, I have another unboxing to do today. So today, I am going to be unboxing a rose. This is the Dark Pink Climbing Eden Rose. It is supposed to be shipped to me bare root. So let's see how this arrived. Okay, has the directions here. I was wrong, it's not coming bare root, it's coming in a pot, which is absolutely fine too. So this is from Heirloom Roses. They are not a sponsor. They came highly recommended to me. And this is my Eden Climbing Rose, the pink Eden Climbing Rose. I think they call it, yes, pretty in pink, Eden Climbing Rose. And I am very excited about this rose. So it doesn't look like much. Most of your growers would defoliate the plant before they ship it. That is completely normal. The foliage grows back in after you plant it. The nice thing about having it come in some dirt is that I can tell it's already moist here, so I don't really need to soak it. I can just get to planting this baby. Okay, you'll see this in my garden in the future, hopefully looking absolutely beautiful. So now we're ready to plant up two roses. You just saw me unbox this beautiful, pretty in pink Eden climbing rose. So excited about this one. Um, I first heard about the Eden rose on a YouTube channel, Dig Plant Water Repeat. Love watching her. She's in California, which is a completely different zone than me. But you know what? You just learn from other people on YouTube out there and it has helped me so much. And then I have this beautiful David Austin Boscobel Rose. Also another recommendation, um, this one from Laura on Garden Answer. She just did her big rose tour. Of course, she has like 60 million rose bushes and I have my two. But you know what? I still learned that as she walked around and I saw the Boscobel Rose, I was like, oh, now that's a rose that would I would just love to have. It gets to be about four feet tall, four feet wide, pink with that beautiful old rose type look to it. So, you know, I hope that as you're watching my channel once in a while, you see a plant or a flower that you're like, oh yeah, if I see that at the nursery, that's one that I'm going to pick up myself because I just love doing that. So I've decided I'm going to put these two roses into grow bags. Now you know that I love to use the bags in the pot in another pot and move them around my yard. I think it's a highly underrated practice. And for roses, you would be surprised. They do great in planters in pots for a number of years. So I, you know, I'm not quite really sure where I want to put these yet. I think that this is going to be a great answer for that. I can put them in a more sunny area. I can make sure that I can see them when they're in bloom and move their pot a little bit. Um, I think it's going to work really, really well for me. So let me show you how I'm going to do that because planting up a rose is a little different than some of your other plants. I'm going to start with the pretty in pink. Eden Climber. Now this one of course doesn't have as much dirt in the planter to begin with so I've already added some dirt to this grow bag here and I'm just going to sort of nestle it in and make a hole for it. Don't worry I'm going to take it out of its pot in a second. Make sure I have space and you sort of try to get it in the center. Now roses like to be planted deeply so if you've purchased a plant like this you can try to just line the dirt up with where it currently is. That is absolutely fine. But you wanna make sure that you um, are not uncovering the base here. Now, some of roses are grafted, which means that they have a different type of rose for their roots than the flowering one on top. And if it's a grafted rose, it's really important to keep where it connects to the graft underneath the dirt because that's going to be the part that you don't want to have freeze too much that you want to protect. Once in a while you'll see a rose revert to that type and it could be that the part above or right at the graft died and it just goes back to what the roots are there. Okay, this is looking good. We need a little bit more dirt. And I think we'll be all set. Now, this particular climber gets to be about 10 to 12 feet tall. 
So you might be like, ah, that's not something to keep in a pot. But remember with a climber, you're often cutting it back a bit, keeping those um, main stems. So the first few years till I find exactly where I want this, that is absolutely okay to have it in the pot. And I've left a couple inches at the top here so that I can water without the dirt going over the top of the bag. Ah, so let's talk about the boscobel a bit. I told you that it gets to be about four feet tall, four feet wide. In fact, it says right on the tag that this is a great one to keep in a planter. So this one might just live in its bag and its pot for its whole life. That is absolutely fine. This of course has a lot more dirt here on the base. So I'm actually not going to put any dirt in here to begin with. I think we'll just have to probably fill in around the sides and that's absolutely fine. Of course, the difficult thing with transplanting your roses here is that you're trying not to get stabbed by all the thorns. And these two varieties do have thorns. Um, so you sort of have to be a little careful. Maybe put on thicker gloves than I have right now, but so far that was okay. And now I'm just going to scoop some dirt around the edge here, really make sure that it's nice and stable. Now, many years ago, I was really into roses, got in my first house, and I invested in maybe 12 to 15 roses. Oh, I researched them, I chose the most beautiful roses, got them planted, they did look gorgeous. And that first year, they did great. I babied them along, um, I sprayed them, I made sure I fed them, and then I had my daughter, and it was downhill for the roses. My daughter did great though, so that's the good thing. Um, you know, for my, that time in my life, I, it was just too busy for me really to take care of the roses the way they needed it. I have found that a good preventative um, neem oil spray really is needed. They really do like a lot of plant food, rose food. Um, and so my roses, I moved away from roses after that. But now my daughter is 21, so I definitely should be able to focus on the roses a bit more. And I know a lot more what to expect and just staying on top of taking care of them. So this is looking really, really good here. I think we're almost, almost all set. A little more dirt on this side. Now, um, this is not sponsored by miracle Grow Potting Mix. That is what I am using, of course. And that will give them enough food to begin with. Um, and then, after a while, I might add a time release fertilizer or a rose fertilizer. You really do need to add some fertilizer to the roses, I find, in the spring and then once after their first flush of blooming. That's my my go-to there. Um, okay, Ooh, these are looking good. So excited about these. Brings back lots of good memories of roses. And this one even has a bud at the top. Oh, this is so awesome. I love hydrangeas. They're still my number one, but I can see why roses are number one worldwide. They really are beautiful. So lots of good times to look forward to here. So remember that you do need to fertilize them. The other thing is the spraying. So you can start with something that's, you know, really not um, toxic to many things like neem oil. Make sure you do it either first thing in the morning or in the evening when your pollinators are not out. I do find that roses tend to get aphids. That's always been my problem. So if you can start right away, weekly or every other week, using a neem oil on them, hopefully you can keep that problem at bay. And then of course, a lot of people do run into, especially here in New England, black spot problems. There are sprays for that if needed, but I tend to wait until I really see a problem with that. Now I just have to decide where I'm going to put these in the garden. So Dan will probably see me puttering around, moving them from place to place until they're just right. I hope that this has given you some ideas that you can go out and just get a rose, put it in a pot, try it somewhere in your yard and see how it goes for you. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you in the next video.